What's going on everyone? Welcome to the video. I hope you're all good. So, you cheaters. Well, don't worry because today we're going over the aftermath of a cheat meal and what steps you can take to recover from it and get back on track. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So this video is in light of my recent cheat meal. I consumed around about 3,000 calories. I'm currently cutting and I didn't feel bad for it one bit. You may be wondering why I didn't feel bad for it. Firstly guys, I had it planned. While you're cutting, it's obvious cheat meals are gonna come into play at some point, you know. You're in a calorie deficit and you're craving uh, naughty, naughty food so to say it's natural your body's gonna crave it and depending on what sort of macro split you're on your cravings may differ but that's that's possibly just a myth bottom line is guys quite simply a failure to plan is a plan to fail whilst on a cut and planning a cheat meal will not only make you feel better for doing it but it gives you motivation to get to that point and when you've done it, you kind of gain more motivation to go from there. So today I have five beautiful tips you can take to sort your mental and physical state out after a large cheat meal. Tip number one, sort your calories out. As I said guys, I went in on my cheat meal. I went heavy, consuming 3,000 calories. My daily calorie limit on my cut at the moment is 2,200 calories a day. So leading up to it during the day, I only ate 500 calories, leaving me with 1,700 calories for the cheat. Things obviously went sour and I consumed around 3,000 calories and it was amazing. But that did put me over my daily calorie intake. At this point, I've consumed about 3,500 calories during a day. My limit is 2,200. I've overconsumed by 1,700. So I need to make that work for the rest of the week. I had my cheat meal on the Tuesday. So what I've done is divided the remaining 1,300 calories was I over eight by five. As from Tuesday, you got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, five days to make up for it. That made 260, so 1,300 divided by five is 260. I then took 260 from 2,200, and that was 1,940. So that was my calories up until Sunday. So after Sunday, I'll go back to 2,000, probably go to 2,100 and build it back up again. That now means Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll be consuming 1,940 calories. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that is the healthiest thing to do, and I would not recommend it every week, but once every couple of weeks or every month, whilst you're on a cut, depending on the person you are, I would say every month, that's what I would do myself. But while on a cut, it will level out the effects of having a fat cheat meal. You should see that a lot of the water weight and all the salt, sugars and whichever you've eaten will slowly drop off and it won't stick around for as long as obviously you are reducing your calories in order to correspond with it. And bottom line, it shouldn't affect the cut too much. However, as I say, I would do it every couple of weeks or maybe once a month. Depending on how long your cut is, if it's six weeks, maybe do one every three weeks. And if it's eight weeks once a month or if you really want to you can probably do one every two weeks or something along those lines but as i say it depends on you as the person it shouldn't affect your cut too much tip two hydrate yourself cheap meals are very high in salt and sugar Depending on what sort of cheat meal you have, it can be both, it can just be one. But either way, it's a good idea to flush all the unwanted substances Giggity. out with water. I would usually aim to drink two litres plus the day after, um, and as much as I can on the evening, but obviously 3,000 calories down, you're quite full. The last thing you want to do though is make yourself sick, so do it carefully. Tip number three, guys, is exercise. Exercise. 
The next day, exercise is your friend, but not horrendous amount of long-winded cardio. The reason for this is that it releases chemicals that makes your body want to store fat if you do too much long-winded cardio. If you're like me and like to weight train, do so either late morning or when you feel right, but earlier the better, as you'll have more calories inside of you. You will find as well, if any of you guys have ever trained before, whilst on a cut and having a cheap meal, you'll know what it's like, but the pump is amazing due to all the extra calories. You'll have more energy in general during a training session, and you never know, you might make some gains whilst on the cut. But as I say, long-winded cardio is almost like punishment to your body. Your body would just want to store the extra calories as it will release hormones and chemicals that are linked with fat storage. A simple weight training or hit high intensity interval training session would suffice. Maybe throw a few extra sets or reps in on the weight training and just go for it on the hit training. Number four, eat a high protein and veggie diet for the next day. Protein is great for your muscles. It's great to help you maintain muscle mass during a cut. It's great for making you feel full. High protein diets have also been linked to proven fat loss. I aim for around about 180 to 190 grams of protein a day, but everyone is different. A, a good estimate is a pound for every pound of body weight. If you weigh 170 pounds, aim for about 170 pounds of protein. I put it up a bit because I enjoy protein. I love chicken, I love beef, I love mint, I love turkey and all that sort of stuff. I love the I love the protein, so I have quite high amounts and it also satisfies me, makes me feel full whilst I cook. Everyone knows that you feel a bit sluggish after a cheat meal, so the veggies should help you feel back on track. Basically it's better than having processed food in your body. Tip five guys. Tip five guys. And lastly, tip five. And lastly, tip five. Use it as motivation. People feel bad when they've had a cheat meal because there's nothing you could do other than sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and move on. Use the cheat meal as motivation to get you going again. The last thing you want to do after a cheat meal is completely ruin your diet by having another and another and another. Get back on track, go again because you'll find it will rebalance your body's chemicals and hormones and during a cut it may even boost, well it's been very much so linked with boosting your metabolism in regulation and also as I said they are great for motivation. So next time you have a cheat meal, don't feel bad. Guys, talk to me down in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this kind of video, more of an information-based video. Leave a like if you want to see another video like this. Comment with your fattest cheat meal. Obviously, this is out on Monday, so mine was last week on Tuesday, 3,000 calories. I'm sure I probably have done more than that. I just haven't recorded it. Um, and by the way, 3,000 calories, that is a rough estimate. It was around about 3,000 calories, but it's not going to affect your cut too much because, as I say, your metabolism's already smashing it as long as you're doing the right cut. With all that being said, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Peace.